Hey John, I just wanted to show you, hopefully it's a quick video, but show you a setup for lighting your asset. When I look at the renderings that you did, um, first of all, it's a great asset. It has good roughness, variation, imperfections, a lot of things that aren't necessarily coming over in this image that you have here. Um, and I wanted, I wanted to create something a little bit more dynamic, um, like the one that you see here. And I'll show you exactly how to accomplish that. I'll show you a few tricks. One thing, just right off the bat, I would say your angle isn't very um, flattering. And the reason for that is over here, we kind of have a lot of information squeezed into a tight little, what's what's becoming a tangent over here. You have these two parallel bars that are uncomfortably close to each other. It's turned in a way that makes this just kind of um, uncomfortable to look at. And then over here, we have another near tangent of this line intersecting with, or almost intersecting with this leg. These are all just things you wanna keep an eye out for. Um, you could also say you have a near tangent here with this line almost intersecting the back corner. So when I compose a three-fourths angle like this, those are some things my eye is looking out for. I'm keeping this away from the parallels here, trying to kind of split in a comfortable space. Same thing here, I'm trying to get these legs not to create a tangent. Um, I want to be able to see this face. So, you know, unavoidably, anything you render, you'll end up with some tangent, right? Like, we, we have some things that that are not ideal, but I would say overall, the angle from here to here is a lot more appealing for a hero shot. Um, so that was just the first note. And now for the actual lighting of this thing. So what I often do is I start with an HDRI. So I just hit Control T on your world uh, texture to with Node Wrangler enabled to add the environment texture and then go to open. And by the way, this is a lot less formal than my usual tutorials. So hopefully the audio quality is all right. This isn't my normal tutorial setup. Okay, so as far as HDRIs go, um, if you're not familiar already, uh, I think they call themselves Polyhaven these days. But go to polyhaven.com, they have a lot of free HDRIs. So yeah, you just go to Polyhaven and then browse HDRIs. And there's a lot of good ones. Um, one that I find myself using a lot, I mean, there's no one right answer here, but I do like the Artist Workshop let me see if I can find that one for you. Yep, this one right here, uh, four years ago. I, I think it's really great, and I use it for probably too many renderings. Um, it's, it's good soft light, very soft light. The balance between the light coming from the windows and the rest of the room isn't too too much of a, a range, so it's just a good like foundational starting point for me on a lot of projects it will throw some randomness into your scene, which is better than starting from like just a single area light. Um, I usually just download one or 2K for lighting purposes, just so it's more responsive. So if we grab that 1K artist workshop, then we have a good kind of foundation for lighting. What I'll usually do is I'll take the rotation and I might try to place these, these windows. Um, I might try to place them more coming in from the side Something with side light that's good is you get a good gradient across the product. Um, so I might start with something like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just add our camera really quick. I'll shoot at 2048, which is probably higher resolution than, than what you had. Uh, so that's just an, a low hanging fruit. Something else, I didn't actually do this very well on this shot. Um, this is maybe more of a product photography thing, but you see how these these legs or the side of the product aren't parallel with the side of the frame. If you wanted to get more of that, then you would just go for a longer lens. Um, and of course, longer lenses get rid of distortion. You wanna be careful though, because at some point your product starts to look extremely small. I would say typical furniture size product photography, I would shoot with an 85 millimeter on a full frame, something like that. So again, I'm kind of just looking out for just setting up the, the good angle without tangents. And that's a good, that's a good foundation. Um, I'm going to show you another trick. So this, this next trick is not something that you need to do on every scene. In fact, I don't think I did it on your scene, but it's just a good general trick that you should know. So 
I'm going to set up um, a shader ball setup, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. This is to kind of define what is ground zero, what is the, the starting point for asset values. If that, that'll make sense in a second. Sorry, I don't feel like I'm speaking very clearly right now. Um, add two spheres. The first sphere, let's go to our object texture. First sphere, I am going to add a an RGB and I'm going to set that to a value of 0.18, which is middle gray. It's directly in the middle. And let's go with that one straight into the surface. So what's happening is there's no shading detail, obviously. Um, this is just straight color pumping into our scene. It would be the same if you dropped it into an emission node with a value of one, exactly the same thing. So I'll just take that and plug it straight in there. And this one, if we want to keep organized, we can call it shadeless. I'm going to copy this, or at least copy the value. And then over here in the next sphere, I'm going to put that same value in right here and maybe bump the roughness up just a little bit. So we have a shadeless sphere that's middle gray, and then we have a sphere in our scene that's middle gray. And what this tells me pretty much immediately is that our scene, as far as like middle gray accuracy goes, our scene is a little bit dark. So that means if the table texture um, was painted in kind of a neutral environment in Substance Painter, then we can know that from a look dev standpoint, in the rendering, it's showing up a little dark. And we want things to be as accurate as we can when showing products for an asset library. So we want to get this looking more like this. Of course, we will have some gradient because we have light fall off and other things. But what we could do, um, first things first, let me go to our color management. I am using Filmic for this. I'm just going to put in some high contrast just as a starting point of contrast. And then I'm going to go to my film settings and I'm going to make the background transparent just so it's not distracting us. And then I'm going to come to the world settings and I'm going to bump this up maybe to like 1.5. And you can see that this is maybe, maybe a better foundation. It's still on the dark side a little bit, um, but we are, we are getting kind of in this middle area. That's where I'm looking at. It's a little bit closer to what we have here. It's not perfect yet because I'm still going to add some more lights. So now let's talk about lighting. Um, the only real two rules that I have is one, less is more. Um, a common mistake that I see artists make is they flood the scene with lights and the product is lit from every angle and things end up looking really flat. So less is more. And the second one is unless you're doing like a horror themed flash photography style asset, you never really want to light it from the side of the camera. This is probably stuff you already know, but let me just show you quickly what a scenario like that would, would do to the asset. So if we had a big, strong light kind of from the camera angle, what it does, just trying to find a decent value, is we kind of lose form and detail and everything. It fills in all the cracks. Um, this is really good if you're doing portrait photography and you don't want someone to have any wrinkles in their face. So we don't really want to take that route. So I'm going to delete that one. We want to backlight it and we want to side light it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get a good highlight here because I'm not picking up any detail. So I'm going to grab an area light. I'm going to rotate that thing. And the smaller your light source, the harder the light source is. Um, I'm trying to pick up some nice small little imperfections there. So I made it a harder light source. And this is why I don't have a default template set up because I really do feel like every product I end up lighting just a little bit differently. So I don't really have a, a template. Um, I'm playing with the size of the light for the softness of that um, shadow right there. Trying to find a good balance and more than anything, I just play around with it. Every time I add a light, uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll set it to zero just to see if I really like the addition um, because we want to be careful everything that we add. And I'm going to have the value be lower than 10, maybe like maybe like four or something or, or seven. That was a little slip. Six. Let's go for six. 
And again, I'm just playing around. Um, next one I want to grab is some highlights on the top here. So same little process. This one, I'm going to make the light a little shorter, maybe a little wider. And again, I'm kind of, I'm kind of watching out for those tangents again here. I don't want this edge of this light to line up directly with this corner. So even with lighting, um, it's good to think about tangents and trying to place this in, uh, in an attractive spot. So I kind of like that. We we fall off on the edge here, and then this line comes in right right there, which isn't too close to the corners here. So good. Again, I'll set it to set it to zero, and I definitely like the addition of that one. I'm actually going to keep it pretty high, maybe at like eight. Okay, and then something else that I I didn't do for your scene, but looking back, I think I. I want to do something like this. Now this isn't, this one in particular isn't very realistic and we'll see if I want to keep it, but I want to have something under here to highlight a little bit. Um, I don't know. Let's just see. Actually, you know what, what I, what I'll do with this light is I'll make it a little bigger and I'm going to flip it totally upside down as if it's simulating bounce light from the floor. And actually, I actually think I do like that. Very subtle. Um, keep it subtle, but I just want to give a little bit of visual interest so that's not a just a dark spot down there. Okay. Um, I think that's good as far as lighting goes for now. Now let me show you something else extremely important. So this is where the, the real-time compositor comes in handy. It's in later versions of Blender. I'm using version... 3.6 alpha. Um, so the real-time compositor is enabled just by coming up to your shading settings and you can enable it in the camera view or just everywhere. Um, and then you come up to this editor type and go to compositor, use nodes. Um, and then let's drop down a color balance node. This is a big one. I'm gonna interrupt that stream and let's change this to offset power slope. This is how I'm introducing even more contrast into the image. So this is kind of like your contrast amount, and this is kind of like your highlights, bringing that back up. So as you bring these two values up, you could see pretty immediately we get something that's that's more appealing. Blender, if you've ever shoot on cameras, shot on cameras, um, you get the raw codec or whatever which looks a little bit more washed out. It has more value information, but it does end up looking a little bit more, less contrasty than what our eyes like to see. And Blender's no different. It's filmic color transform or view transform leaves things looking a little bit more washed out because it's giving you such a wide range of values to work with. So this is something, if nothing else in your compositor, I really think you should at least be dropping this down to try to bring up some contrast. And now what I'll do is I'll take a last pass on kind of the lighting values. Careful not to go overboard, but now I'm losing some of this darkness down here. I might exaggerate the top a little bit more. Um, I am gonna make this one a little bit more subtle maybe. And again, you can kind of reference your spheres um, you can see that things are getting very dark here, um, but I kind of think it works for this dramatic kind of asset. If you wanted to introduce some more kind of natural bounce lighting, you could just drop down like a white plane here, and or any color. The lighter it is, the more bounce it will give you. And then under the visibility settings, you could just turn on Shadow Catcher or you can move it to a collection here and within that collection, turn on your indirect only and then just turn on indirect only. So you won't see it in the rendering, but it will influence the reflections in the scene. Um, I'm actually gonna leave it off in this case and just, yeah, you can endlessly tweak, make things better. I think I'll kind of end it right here. Oh, one more thing with this asset. Um, I did end up turning down your your height value, just personal preference, just because I felt like it was kind of getting a little bit, 
I don't know, a little harsh. And uh, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with your maps. I just think as I'm putting this into a rendering for the product, I, I did end up blowing that down a little bit, just so you're aware. And uh, yeah, I, I'll probably grab a back angle of this too. So anyway, that was about almost 20 minutes. Um, definitely informal. I haven't cut it down at all. I'm, I'm rambling a little bit. Hopefully all, audio quality is all right. But yeah, let me know if that helps you at all. Um, I, I guess while we're here, I'll go over some quick render things. Um, default of 4096 is usually overkill. I might take this at like 1024. Uh, performance wise, I mean, it's just a still rendering, so I'm not gonna get into that. Let's, let's do a quick render. I do leave on denoising. I'm just gonna do a quick render so that I can show you maybe some more compositing stuff. So I'm not too worried about performance because it is just a still rendering. Let's let it, let it do its thing. And it'll apply the compositor pass now. You'll see when that happens. Um, I'm gonna exit this. I'm gonna go to our image viewer here. View our render result. And over here, I'm gonna open back up our compositor. A few more common things that I might add. Um, one is I'll drop down a mix node and I might mix between the noisy and the denoised image. So just drop down a mix. You'll have to swap those two around. If this is zero, then it's our noisy image. If it's one, then it's denoised. In this case, I actually like the noisy image because de denoisers tend to get rid of detail and we don't really have a lot of noise in the scene. So I'm just gonna leave it denoised. Um, another common thing, just to make it a little bit more crispy is I might add a filter. And um, I think diamond sharpen is a good good option. Now, obviously this is way too much. So I'll set it to zero and then I'll try to crawl that back up maybe like 0.1. And I don't know if you'll see this after this video is compressed, but hopefully you could see at 0.1, there's just a little bit of a difference. I might go all the way up to 0.2. If you're ever unsure if something is an improvement or not, you could just come here and hit M to mute it and just view with and without it. I feel like that does crispen up some of your details and looks nice. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, lighting, camera angle, and compositor. Those are the, the key things for what, what I do for uh, product imagery. So anyway, I'm, I'm just going to start rambling if I don't cut it off. So I'm going to add it there. Thanks.